This is the year 2000, 1990, and 2010. Each of these different colors shows how the internet has been used during that 20 year time span. And you can see a long time ago, people were doing a thing called FTP, and that has slowly gone away. The web, look at that. The web is actually in terms of usage, but look at what's happening. Here's peer to peer. This is that social networking that we're reading and hearing so much about. Students are interacting. But this one, look at, this is video. This is the use of video, and now it takes up almost half of what the purpose of the internet, of why people are on the internet. They're using it for video. And I'm going to talk about why it actually is a little bit more appealing to us than we might have never thought of. It's an interesting thing we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, I think when we look at what uh, YouTube, for one, YouTube displays 18 million hours of video a day. Uh, we think about some other things. Cisco, a computer networking company, predicts that 90% uh, of the web's content is going to be video in four years. And when we think about what that requires, it's a thing called bandwidth. Bandwidth means that you're getting data pushed at you faster and faster than ever before. And if you have low bandwidth, it's going to be really slow. If you have high bandwidth or high speed uh, connections, it's going to be a lot faster. So bandwidth, when you look at it, has ex exploded for so many people. It's really just it's, it's our abilities to be able to even do the streaming that, for some of you that might be watching online, wasn't capable of being done a few years ago because we didn't have the bandwidth capability of being able to do that. So what we need to start thinking about as educators is how can we embrace the, the huge amount of video that is out there. And I'm getting to the point now where if I don't know how to do something, I think, I wonder if it's on YouTube. Because it, chances are it is on YouTube. Somebody has put something out there. It has done great things for hobbies all over the world that normally wouldn't have uh, had such a huge audience. So uh, that's one thing that when we think about educators, how can we incorporate this in? Here's just some more data about um, how are students spending their time. Uh, this huge, big, blue area shows that students still depend on TV for a huge amount of entertainment and passing the time. So that's about uh, almost five hours on average that students are, have a TV on near them. Now keep in mind that they may also be listening to the radio. They may also be on the phone. They may be on the computer for two hours a day on average. They may be multitasking. So we need to think, well, what are our students doing when they're in school? And when they go home, they've got all these different stimuli that are going on. How can we get them to use it in a more constructive manner? I think there's a lot of people uh, here in this room and online that would agree. Our students really know how to do Facebook really well. But when it comes to actually using it for academic purposes, that's a completely different thing. So that's where the educator comes in and says, hey, this is how you use it for more constructive purposes.